and welcome to another episode of the Viva Bastardo show brought to you by the Haggerty Podcast Network. Today we have Simon Lowesby, head of Hyundai Styling Group. Um, I'm super excited about this one. It was such a great conversation. He is a really inspiring guy. Uh, we talk about DeLoreans, oddly enough. We talk about uh, inspiration, about fear of terrible ideas, about the rubbish bin, um, about always pushing a little bit further than you want to go. It's such a great conversation. So uh, check it out. Simon. Good morning, Phil. I am so happy, man, that I'm talking to you. I'm just going to have a small moment of like Elvis fanboy uh, situation happening. For who? For who? Hold <laughs> for on. For you, man. For, for you. Who? It's just me, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm this hidden hero. I'm just in the background. <laughs> Look, well, first of all, man, thank you so much for doing this. And secondly, thank you for ruining my entire year with your awesome. Envision. What did I do? You, the Envision 74 ruined my year. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. We're it's, happy to ruin anybody's year with that. <laughs> I mean, it's such a fantastic piece of kit. Uh, and I feel like, is, is, there, is there any chance it's going to be real or are these things you can't reveal at this time? This is the yeah, we, um, <laughs> Obviously, we, we, we can never reveal anything, but the, <laughs> what's clear right. is that the more people that write about it, the more people say we want it, the more people you keep get momentum going. People are like, Just, can they build that thing? gives us a better chance at least it's such a it's such a, a glorious kind of i don't know combination of like obviously jujaro but like the 70s and the and the, uh, and the peak yeah. kind of concept car yeah. era and yeah. muscle car and all sorts of i mean everyone yeah. i know it, it immediately made me depressed about whatever cars i happen to own isn't that awesome <laughs> Just, i mean we we were uh let's see how can i be honest about this we were quite surprised with how well it went as well because we, you know, when you, you probably know when you, 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 you can never define when a moment of inspiration comes. It's like you have these project plans and all, everything's like, yeah, okay, you, by then you have to have inspiration. And this one, I have to say, I work with such amazing people. I mean, Sang Yap Lee, Bomsu Cho, um, these guys are so damn cool. And Sang Yap, you know, he's, he's Korean American. And he's, you know, he's lived outside Korea for so long, but he knows the history of the company. And with Arnic Five, the, the pony of the 70s was a story um, for that connection to our like legacy. And But there was the pony coupe that was never built. It was, it was the two-door coupe. It was got to a prototype stage. They even did tooling, but they never built it. And, and Sangham's had these sketches for like years, like, ah, sometime we're going to do a car like this. And when this, when the... The end vision the, or the end team, our performance division, they came literally, I, I never forget, it was like October, not last year, the year before, and they came to me and said, Simon, look, we need, we need two cars. Um, I said, okay, what kind of cars? All you. We need two, we need one full electric and one hydrogen fuel cell. I was like, okay, this is beginning to sound like fun. Um, uh, have you got any money? I said, yeah, yeah, we have budget. I said, okay, th then we can do something. Um, and Sang was like, I think we should, this is the car to do the pony. He's like, this is, this is the car. We, we, we're ready for this. We've been waiting for this moment. And he had these little doodles. And uh, yeah, and then hands on Bomsu Cho and these guys, Andy, um, just, just you know, get on with it. And, and it was this connection of legacy, history, cool factor. Um, it kind of jumps over the generations of being cool somehow. So the old guys like us, right, sorry, I added you to my group of old guys. Um, the old guys like us are like, it's the 70s. Oh, can you hear me? I can't hear you at the moment. Your microphone's off, Phil. Can you hear me okay, Phil? Yeah, I, I can hear you, but my... Oh, oh there we go. Now. Okay. now you're back. Sorry, you turned my sound. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Sorry so, about that. That's all right. So, we, so yeah, it was, and that, it was so expressive. And we, we were looking at the package, seeing this is, this is it. We can do this. And with... With people like uh, Bomsu and his team, Andy and that, where we had this little direction, and then I'm honestly, I'm sort of riding this racehorse at the time, like, oh, it's going, just, just, just give it a little bit of tweak, and it's going to keep going. Um, did you have no? Did you have no time to do it? Because I, I often find it, I find sometimes in creative projects, the less time you have, the better opportunity the for genius. That's exactly the point. That that you don't over design, right. you you express yourself. And, and yeah. this car was an expression. It was like, well, let's just do it. And and yeah, as it was running, and I remember looking at the claim model at one stage, and it was heavily virtual, of course. We built a checking, checking claim model. 
tweak it a bit, do it in virtual. Um, and I just, you just, I remember saying to the guy, said, yeah, dad, watch this and try that. And next time I looked at it, it's done. And I remember saying, it, coming, is that thing? Oh, just, just give a bit more shape here. And the guys were having fun. When you've got that momentum, leave them at it. Just let right. them go. Um, right. It's like slapping a horse on the back and it's going to go and, and we all were kind of <laughs> trying to ride it. And I was, yeah, so it kind of went down at, in all, what was interesting, fascinating, is all generations it went down so well. It kind of, all different levels and whether it's super young, young, old, very old, it just, it's got well, because it's enough. It's, got, it's, 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 it's a, there's enough of a, there's enough things happening in there that, that, that aren't, it, it's kind of like, um, what's beautiful about it is it, it's absorbed a lot of different ideas but you don't necessarily see them when you see it. Yes. They just resonate. They just resonate. It, it it just comes out as its own thing. But you can see, you can understand there are influences in there, like Jujaro and all that kind of stuff, and and the seventy stuff and the Mustard Car. But it doesn't. You, you haven't oversalted the soup. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I know what you mean. Uh, it's, uh, it's stories. It's the stories, the hidden stories. You can look at any bit of that, and there's a story attached to it which has meaning, and it's it's real. We talk a, a lot about. Do you really believe in what you're doing? Do, right. do you believe? Is there a is there a story? Are the signals right to build that picture? And and but we couldn't say no to any of the pictures. You know, it's like those signals they all work. Is that that's it? And I remember when we showed the car at very high level the first time we shown, people didn't want to walk away from it. People right. sort of turned and walked off and came back and were like, look at, huh? You know, you could see them thinking, yeah, I could see myself driving that through Gangnam. It was, it was really, <laughs> right. you know, it's, you, you could, you could see people think you click, 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 click. They didn't say it, but their face said, yeah. And so, I mean, there's always a chance that something gets built. It's very, very slim chance. But what a lot of people don't know is, is that car is not a design model. It's a, it's a, it's a wheel spinning, tire screeching, right. drivable test bed. And it I've has heard. the most awesome interior as well. No, it's not interior. It's got this killer interior too. So, and I, so it's, it's the whole it's you're making it basically. worse you, you just, you're just yeah, making sorry. it worse Simon you're really <laughs> you're I'd, I'd to... never driven it <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> now I feel better I've not driven it either yeah, see, I feel I'm better now <laughs> <laughs> I will say uh, and I've been talking about this for a while I've been posting about Hyundai for a while because I feel like um, it is the most audacious major car company I think that's that's around today I think that what's mm. happening what, the things that you guys are doing is is kind of extraordinary. I mean, first of all, you, ha you, well, you have the you know you have the Envision seventy four, which has depressed me. Yeah. But then <laughs> you've got the the Ionic five, which is kind of this. It, it in some ways, um, and I know this has been written about and mentioned, but there's this sort of tenuous, vague Giugiaro echo in that Lancia Delta ish sure. shape. Um, sure. Yeah. And actually, I was wondering. What's interesting is that it seems like, and then you have the Ionic 6 and the 7, and they're all quite mm. disparate. And, and what's interesting, part of the audacity yeah. to me is you had this amazing hit with the Ionic 5. And then yeah. if you had been, say, Audi, you would have done the same car, but maybe slightly different wheel arches or something, mm. or whatever it mm. happened to be. Mm. But instead, you do this entirely different design, which is really ballsy. Yeah. I mean, it's almost yeah. like, you know how do scary you remember that is? <laughs> oh, I, I, well, yeah, because it, it's interesting because what because what I think most car manuf most people now, creative people, movie studios and car manufacturers seem to op operate on the Marvel superhero franchise idea. You make yeah, one yeah. and then you make another that's very similar and another that's very similar because you have because mm. it's a safe bet. It but works. Instead, yeah. yeah. But instead, you guys are uh, leaping and, and it's almost like the do you remember? Um, Lamborghini in the 70s, how disparate the cars were. They had the, yeah, awesome, the Espada, awesome. the Countach, the Islero. Yeah, they had yeah. all this crazy stuff and yeah. it all looked very different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know where my question is. I guess I, I, I'm just, well, actually, interesting enough, here's one question for you. I know you have a DeLorean. How'd you know that? How do you know? Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, I've been who watching you for years. I've been I <laughs> call all my friends and said, "Who told Phil I have the Delorean?" Yeah, I've been I've been stalking you, man. And I I will yeah, say I that I, I I love the Delorean. I I, I think it's a, a really perfect shape. And I am wondering mm. if the the rear taillights on the Delorean are sort of a idea of pixels. Is that an idea that's filtered into your subconscious and ended up in the Did in somebody the tell DNA you that string? as well? No, oh, I made that up. I made that up myself. <laughs> because that is, I mean, pixels are really, I mean, sounds crazy. This is really important to us. Pixels is, we have like, 
this cyberpunk lineup of ionic cars, five, six, and seven. The coming back to what you mentioned before, it's all about taking a car towards the lifestyle of the consumer. So what, what is that lifestyle? What are they after? What are they trying to do? What do they need from something? Because quite often they don't want to drive the same thing as their son, but in big, or the same thing as their mother in small. Or what, it, we're trying <laughs> to go towards that. What are they after? What are those people after? And, and what we wanted to do, though, was create some kind of connection between them. So come back to the food analogy. You, you go to you put a whole lot of dishes on the table. You taste one, you know that's Indian food. Another one, you know that's Indian food. Why? The spices are similar. One of the spices for us, one of them for our electric vehicles, for Ionix, is the Pixel. Because the Pixel is like the symbol of digital. It's the symbol of starting that digital. It's the electronic age. And you, I know you're a watch collector. I've done my research too. So, so you probably have some early digital watches. I have my Texas Instrument watches and, the, and you know, the, some of the dot matrix displays. That for us from our era is, yeah, that's like supremely uh, like a connection to us. And then if you go to the 80s, yeah, well, it is DeLorean. It's the tail lights. It's the pixels. And you come to modern day, um, it's Minecraft. And sure. it kind of, it, it's kind of just cool on many levels. Um, but one thing I didn't realize, and one, when I moved to Korea so three and a half years ago, I'm, I'm, I'm this sort of cultural sponge. I get somewhere, it's like, okay, what's this place about? What, wh- why is Korea where it is? Where is it aesthetically? Why has it got here? So with the design team in Namyang um, and in the headquarters in Seoul, I said, guys, can you just bring pictures, 20 pictures each of what defines Korea for you? What is Korea about? And, and what, you know, and you, you, we had this wall. Of course, a lot of it was visual, uh, but a lot of it was culture and history and stories and so on. And, and a whole lot of it was, was Hangul, the language, was typeface. And that fascinates me because it, it looks well, so damn different. Yeah. It's and circles and lines and squares. and squares. One of the letters in Hangul, Myum is a perfect pixel. It's the only language in the world that I can find that has a pixel in the language. Now, if you research the language, you go back to 1443, when King Sejong decided this script is too complicated. I'm going to democratize language and design an alphabet. And he designed 600 years ago, he designed 23 letters with his team, I guess, um, and, and said, right, this is going to be our language now, and it's letters, and we form them into words like this. So it is an alphabet with words, just like any European language, as opposed to a script. But there are 23 of them, and King Sejong designed the pixel for us 600 years ago. So it's kind of distinctly Korean thing. Um, and Korea is so digital anyway. And that, so the pixel, the DeLorean, it kind of fits our story. Um, and that's when we were born as a company in the early 70s. And you know, when when we were going from mechanical watches into LCD, and I have this beautiful Texas Instruments LCD watch uh, from like 74, um, and then into digit, into into uh, LED displays, so that, that was when we were born. And it kind yeah. of connects to our roots and our legacy. So we kind of, one thing we like to think of somehow shape that future with a legacy. So legacy for us is a very futuristic thing. It's not historic, it's not old. So when you look at it, you don't say retro, you just say cool. And that's what Ends Vision 74 was really trying to do and seems to have you know, tickled a few people in the right places where they're kind of happy <laughs> with it. So it's, I have to say it's great credit to... Well, because like, look, to, like I said, man, the thing that's glorious about that is you don't, you don't see influences when you look at the car. Like mm-hmm. I find often when people do things like that, you can point out parts of other cars. You can yeah. see, you can, you're, yeah. you're, as, as you used to say, when I used to work in advertising, they say, excuse me, your strategy is showing. And and yeah, and so and often you can see. Excuse me, you know your references are showing, but you don't see it in that car. You just see something that's yeah. that's beautifully homogenous and interesting and 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 new. Even though you feel when like you it's old. When you zoom in, in, you see yeah. more. When you zoom sure. in, you stand back, and it, it it's a typical, you know, design thing. Get the proportion right first. Uh, stand right back, squint at it. Is it working proportionally? Okay. With that, you don't have to style anything. You just put emotion yeah. into it. And then you zoom right in, you get to those seven millimeter square pixel lights. And they're, they're three dimensional and it's just, just so clean. And it's just, yeah. And it connects to Arnic 5 somehow as well, that, those pixels and so on. That connects our electric vehicles. 
and it just get, it just grabs you. And when you see it in the flesh, it's it's you know it's I don't know it's forty forty two inches high. It's it you know it's really slammed. Right. I was like, yeah, I'm just trying to upset you even more now. It's, uh, it's just, <laughs> you I, are, I mean, man. You know what? And- Thanks so much for talking to me, Simon. It's been great. Thank okay, you. Bye. I'll go now. Thanks for yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I want to come back to your other point about, you know, you're talking about that you, you, we could have taken the safe bet. We could have done a, a bigger Ionic 5, Ionic 6. Yeah, um, you, could have, you could have done something is- that was evolutionary as opposed to revolutionary. Yeah. For sure. And that was... Of course, we discussed that and we looked at it, but, but Luke, Luke Donkerfolk, Samuel Lee, um, who I work very closely with, um, luckily great friends and colleagues and crazily creative. When I started with Hyundai and they said, look, what we want to do is this. And they showed me, literally, I won't forget it. They showed me a picture of a group of uh, chess players and they said, right. okay, this is what we're going to do. We, they, we, we are going, we're deliberately not going to do the typical German thing, <laughs> um, which is scale them up, scale them down. I mean, if you ask, I think I have no, I have no reference for this, but my guess is, my assumption, my gut feeling is, if you go to uh, a group of a thousand German managers, nine hundred ninety-five will tell you what we're doing is wrong because it's not right. You just shouldn't do that. Sure. No, it's unmöglich, nicht möglich. Um, <laughs> but the the Bless ballsy you. decision, yeah, thank you. The <laughs> the ballsy decision from uh, and direction from Luke and Sanya up and what I joined um, was to say no. Why why do we want to go into a showroom and customers just say look? Is it well they're all the same? I just get a smaller, bigger one. Let's let's create something that grabs the lifestyle of the person. Um, I was reading, I forget which magazine it was, uh, online about Annex 6, and they just said, this is just a cyberpunk dream. <laughs> and that was exactly what we were trying to do with that car. We wanted well, you know what, to... You know, what that, you, know what the, you know what's lovely about that, man? Is, 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 I feel like, uh, I'm, well, I'm not going to say, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say anything rad, revolutionary, but, but electric cars to me are, are, are such an opportunity, finally, for something radical in terms of design. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and so True. the Ionic Six is because of you know the wheel the skateboard architecture etc cetera, etc cetera, which all, yeah, all yeah, that sure. stuff you know, but yeah. but and and that's why the Ionic Six is so exciting because it's so unusual and actually, um, yeah. you said something in an in an interview <laughs> you said something Simon it was I, me. Put it that was me, I, I put it to I put it I put it to you me. sir yes, well it's, it's very interesting yeah. <laughs> please approach the bench objection you said <laughs> you said. Um, just this afternoon, I looked at the external work of our European team. My first reaction was no on a proposal. And yeah. I thought, wait a second, go back. And the reason I'm saying no is because I'm uncomfortable with something I hadn't considered before. And I think that's super yeah. interesting because I think that there's this basic human instinct when you're confronted with new things. To, it's almost like a, it's like the white cells reject it. It's like an infection yes, yes. and they and they reject yeah. it. And so when I looked at the Ionic 6, I was like, oh, that's just weird. And then the more I look at it, I go, ah, there's really interesting, ta- but you know, there's all sorts of like yeah. Tatra stuff in yeah. there, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and 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 the thing that actually struck me as really audacious in 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 the smallest possible way was that there is no logo on the steering wheel. Yes, yeah. Because that, I mean, because yeah. for a company, thank you for uh, noticing. Having, <laughs> because having worked <laughs> in advertising, I know how hard it is for companies to give up the idea yeah. of having their logo yeah. everywhere. Yeah, so, you know um, how that came about. We were we were in a presentation of the interiors, <coughs> and uh, it was either Ionic Five or Ionic Six, and we have this like incredible chairman. Our, our main man is like and he comes to see us once a month, and we spend time with him once a month, and that's a great opportunity to get it very wrong or very right. Um, and he he you know he, we sat there and he said you know he just looked he said. Do everybody, do we need to do that? That's amazing. And he's the one who challenged it. And we, like, right. a good point. He's the one disrupting it. He's the one saying, wait right. a second, do we need to shove our brand down people's throats? Or do we need to, can we be more understated about that? And just have something where people say, oh, wow. And, and then we worked on the, okay, what do we do instead? And, and then the four pixels on the steering wheel came up as a story because in Morse code, four dots is H, the letter H. And yeah. I see quite a few places, people are like really playing with Morse code again. It's pretty interesting, shortwave radio and the shortwave messaging each other. 
Um, I heard a TED talk about it recently. Um, I, d- I don't and, know who uh, you're hanging so out with, man. Came, I know, weird people, right? Weird people. <laughs> no, I have too much time in the car listening to TED talks on the way <laughs> right. driving to the studio each day. But no, that was where it came from. And we're like, well, yeah, you're right. yeah, we were fully behind it. I think maybe others in the company, <laughs> maybe the marketing sales guys were a bit sort of, wait a second, hold on, how can we do that? Um, we were the first to do that. Um, just to say, look, let's, let's, let's not shove our brand down people's throats. Let's just be understated about it and let's use those four pixels for something else. So they illuminate an Ionic 6. And when you're using the voice control or you're charging, you get different Morse code messages, you could say, um, <laughs> um, on the steering wheel. So, yeah. It's, but that speaks it's volumes to me, man. That, that's, that speaks volumes to me about, uh, about a commitment <clears throat> to, to seeing differently. Because because yeah, the, the the logo on the steering wheel is a is a is a habit. So much of design and is is habitual is reflexive. Question the habit. Question the habit. Yeah. When somebody says no way, just what you said before. Hold on. Why has somebody got such an emotional reaction to that? Analyze the reaction and ask why, and then think. Can you use that? Because you're you're getting a reaction. Because if there's a negative, there's probably somewhere a positive reaction too. And yeah. Arnic Six was a car where you know people were. People look at me say, I was with an American journalist, and he was he, he was sitting in the back, and he and he was a big guy. He was like um, six foot one or two guys sitting in the back, and he, he was like putting his hand in and say, "Oh, it's a bit tight." I said, "Yeah, I know." Um, he said, "Yeah, well, that's no good." I said, look, "Look, if you want bigger space in the back, go buy an Five. It's over there, right next to. It. Just buy that. It's okay. You know, if you don't, if it, it's not for you, then it's for a different lifestyle." This right. car is designed about a couple in the front, maybe with a kid or somebody who sits there and works on their laptop while they're sending messages while they're waiting to charge. But that's um, also really fascinating, it, man. The idea that you can you can the idea that you can say to a consumer, This is this one is for you, but this one may not be for you. Yeah. That's not yeah. something that people you hear very much in the car it's, world in particular. It is a, an interesting discussion. Um uh I I it, it and it's I guess it is pretty brave. I mean, we're, we, one of our jobs in design is to get into trouble. Um, you know, get into either, if you don't go creative enough, you get into trouble. If you don't challenge enough, you get challenged too much, you get into trouble. But you have to be causing trouble. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we'd not, we shouldn't be here. And so that's one thing where we've been really showing that. And if some people have a reaction over here, on usually if they're thinking positively, if generally everybody's thinking this is the right direction, it's too conservative. If, if you've got a vote in the room and everybody's over there, then we should definitely go over there. Um, because it's too <laughs> so you're a, you're, a, you're a pathological contrarian is what you're saying. <laughs> totally, totally. It's, it's, I, I feel comfortable and we, you know, with our team, with our guys, we feel comfortable in that discussion, in that, in that sort of slightly scary bit. It's a bit like, you know, I don't know, Top Gun, Tom Cruise turns the autopilot off and flies himself. You know, autopilot <laughs> right. will take you to the, to the normal solution. Sure. I was like, okay, let your hair down. What happens if we go over here? And I was talking to a blogger here, oh, middle of last year when we just presented Arnix 6. And he said to me, he said, yeah, but Simon, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my, you know, again, blogs. Um, I blogged about this car, but you know, he's got a million views, uh, a million uh, following in on YouTube. And he said, yeah, but it's like half the people are commenting, they don't like it. They, half the people don't like it. And I said, yeah, well, we want the other half. And I'd love to have 50% market share. <laughs> this is something I learned from Patrick Lecomon. Patrick Lecomon wrote a great piece in LinkedIn about the first Twingo. When they oh, did. I love and the I, Twingo. I love the Twingo. If I get the story right, and I saw Patrick, I met him for the first time in London before Christmas, and I, I told him that I love this story. Um, and he said, you know, as they, as they clinicked the Twingo, 40% of people hated the car. Absolutely hated it. 40% said, Oh, yeah, so. And 20% loved it. And the chairman called him and said, look, we have a problem. 80% of people are just like not going to buy the car. And Patrick said, well, I'd love 20% market share. And they love it. And I was like, so what? who's your customer? Who's the lifestyle? Who are you aiming for? You don't mind if some people don't like that. Good design polarizes. Right. And, and it, it's okay. Philippe Stark, lemon squeeze. And people come in, that's just stupid. Other people come in, oh, it's so cool. That's okay. Well, Philip Stark, I remember reading something fascinating about him. Every time he'd get a, a project in a different city, he, he would keep motorcycles in all the major cities of the world. And every time he would go to that particular city for a project, oh, cool. he would drive around his motorcycle. And, yeah. and I think he's in the, in, he was talking, he would like look through rubbish, like just to there get a go. sense of, 
like to get a sense yeah. of how people are living how society is i That's right. have an equivalent story but i couldn't afford a motorcycle so i had it my bicycle so, so electric Simon, scooter. I had my bicycle no 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 a bicycle a fixie <laughs> So in Beijing, um, I used to travel a lot into Beijing uh, in my previous job. And when, when I moved to Hyundai, I lived in Shanghai. And uh, we had our head office, a little design studio in Beijing. So I would be there once a week. Uh, I mean, crazy thing to say. And, but I mean, Shanghai to Beijing sounds close, but it's a couple of hours flight. Um, but I would arrive there and the hotel I stayed at, they were good enough to look after my bicycle for me. So I'd arrive at East Hotel in, in, um, near the Arts District. And uh, they say, ah, oh, you're in this room number. And we put your bike in your room already. So I get to my room, my bike's there, my bicycle's there. But riding through a city, you really get to feel the pulse of the city. You smell the city. You that smell was his it, whole thing. It, that was his take, whole thing. There, it's awesome. And there you yeah. take the little routes that you wouldn't take because you go in the car and you, you kind of low down. You don't see up right. so much. And cycling, okay, you have to keep an eye forwards because people are mad on the roads in Beijing. But I never had an accident. But you really feel a different vibe about the city and you see different things and you... And you pull over and stop at places because it's much easier on a bicycle. And, and so that bicycle is now here with me in Seoul. So when I go up to, we've got a little studio just north of me here, two kilometers north in Gangnam. I, I just cycle up there. And the guys look at me and said, hold on, that's a bike helmet. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you come in a car? I said, well, it's just, I, I, I feel the city cycling around a bit. I see it, I feel it. And my wife and I, we, you know, each, every week, um, in the evenings, we'll just we'll just go walk and we'll say, oh, that direction today or that direction today. Which way do we walk to, to explore things and find things out about the city? And just, we, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a religious person, so I believe we're only on this planet once, so make the most of every day. And, and to be, have the chance to live in a, and work in a fourth country uh, like this, um, you know, show it some respect, understand it, and, and live with it and learn it. And, and that's what I'm trying to do here. And, and and then maybe some of that rubs off into what we do in design. I love that, man. I mean, I, I, you, you're, you're quite right about that, that we're only here for, for a little bit of time. And so we should be as spongy as possible. It's a blink <laughs> of an eye. I mean, that's right. one of our, as a family, one of our philosophies is travel. Travel. Whenever you can, travel. Um, just to, just to, for, for our kids when they were small, to, to get them used to different cultures. But I have this discussion with HR quite often, but that, that just because somebody thinks differently doesn't make them wrong. They just have a different background behind making that decision. You know, my wife's sure. German, yeah, but she's okay. Um, you know, but but, you, know, we, <laughs> but we, you, you, you managed to live with that. <laughs> that's right. You, you accept the failures, you know? It's like, oh, I hope she's not listening. I was, but, no, but you accept. And I had this in my previous job in, in, in when I was working in China for Volkswagen. Um, I would go back to Germany and they'd tell me how wrong I was. Um, I said, guys, you, you, just because you're a Niedersachsen uh, doesn't make everything you think right. People have a completely different history and background. It's just different. And I had the, I remember we had a fantastic color presentation. Now, one of the people I work with and have done for the last 15 years, she's called Diana Kloster, and she's head of our color and trim team. Uh, she, I used to work with her in Hyundai very closely, in Volkswagen very closely in China. Um, and we used to joke that, you know, we were so close. We were so close together in China so long. So we, we, have, we can't survive with only one of us here. We have to both leave together because, um, right. you know, it'd be no good. Uh, actually, funnily enough, we signed for Hyundai on the same day, but that's another story. But <laughs> one of our presentations to senior German management back then, and it was in Beijing, a big presentation, and we were presenting exterior colors. And one of these exterior colors was this gold color, um, which, which if you know Germany street scene, it's, it's different shades of gray, white or black. And gold right. is just simply wrong. You know, it's just wrong for German things. And so as I got here, and our, our head of engineering, who's a great friend of mine, Uli Hackenberg, he said, he said that, he's just like, yeah, Simon, come on, there's no way. I said, wait. And I had a, on my way to that meeting, I photographed everything gold on the way to the meeting. It just out of my window, my taxi on the way there, printed it all out straight away. And when he said that, I said, watch this. And I, I just had a block of A4, like, like what was it, Bob Dylan in, the, in, the, um, in one of his songs where he had the lyrics. That's right. And I just went through right. it. said, this was here and this was there. And that was there. And this is a temple. And this is on the way past. These are the pillars of this. Ulrich, we're not saying it's right or wrong. We're just saying this 
this color has a story in this country, which is normal and natural. In Germany, those photographs would have, have silver objects or stainless steel objects. Here, there's gold. And, and he said, hmm. And I, I presented that then. I remember I was with, I mean, I had such luck to work with Walter de Silva. And working with Walter, and he used to set up once a year a global design conference in BW Group, and he asked me to give a presentation at that about anything. He said, Sam, could you make a presentation? And we had the design leadership of the whole group. And these guys, they're a phenomenally talented group of people. And I was honored to be part of that group. And he said, can you make a presentation? And I said, well, how long? He said, how long do you want? I said, okay, up to me. I said, what about? He said, what do you want to talk about? I said, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so one of the topics was the color gold. And I, and I, I took out the China Aviation Authority magazine, which is on every domestic flight in China back then, the CAAC magazine. And, um, and, I, and I also took a copy of the latest GQ magazine. And I held them both up, and there was a, a watch advert on, on the back of both magazines. And on the China magazine, it was a gold watch, and on the GQ, it was a stainless steel watch. I thought, this is interesting before the presentation. I went through and counted up in each magazine how many watch adverts there were. And there were 15, I mean, it was like a dream. There were 15 watch adverts in both magazines. And this was my benchmarking study, I think we call it. And so then I counted up how many of them are gold in each magazine. And in the, in the Chinese magazine, 12 of them were gold or had items of gold on that watch. And only three were, were silver or black. In the German magazine, only three were gold. Twelve were silver or black. Right. I said, "Yeah, I and and so gold has a is, plays a different role. It's still the same design. It's just the the lifestyle of the consumer who's come up through different education and different things mean different different things to them. They they, they have different influences. It's just something that's attractive in that region. And somebody said, "Well, well, yeah. Well, what should we do with that then?" I said, "Well, if I were Apple, I would do a gold iPhone. Uh, you got every laugh." It was like, yeah, yeah, it must be mad. Apple did a gold iPhone. No way. Because then about 18 months later, Apple do a gold iPhone. And if I went to any design presentation in China to journalists or public, I, at one stage I would say, stop. Okay, everybody, please hold your phones up. Hold up. Everybody hold your phone up who has a gold phone. It was my little survey each time. And back then it was like 80%. If you go now, it's only 5% or 10%. It's, it, things have changed. Things have moved on. But there's, there are cycles of taste and attractiveness that come from the lifestyle of the, 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 the influences well, it's, it's, on it's somebody growing up. It's contextual. Taste is so contextual, yes, right? Absolutely. And, and, and that's, but do you that's think, what I do find you think, fascinating. But, that, but, uh, but I wonder if it's becoming less contextual because, uh, because of the internet. I mean, when we were yeah, growing up, sure. we, you know, we, we weren't privy. We had it, glimpses of other cultures. You, you, got, you only understood another culture, yeah. saw glimpses of them if you either went there or it was kind of like being in a train and you would just see glimpses yeah, yeah. on the TV, yeah. in, uh, you know, th yeah. through a TV or a magazine article. You just see these little, these little snippets of, of something else. But now we're so exposed to everything all the time that, I mean, I was thinking about car design actually the other day. I mean, other than what Hyundai are doing, um, I still think that Jap Japan has its own kind of very distinctive vernacular that's unlike yep. other car design. Well, actually, America does. I mean, America tends to be like, America tends to be hypersteroidal in the way they design cars. You know, they, they, they just, they've been in the gym yeah, a little they, too much. They, 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 what, what I, I mean, there's certain brands, and one of them's American, one of them's Japanese, but I really respect because they've kept their individuality. They, they, you, sure. you can walk down the street and still say, that has to be them. And I, I love that. Um, sure. A lot, a lot of brands you just don't know, or you know the brand, but you don't know which one of them it is. You look in your mirror, and is it? Is it? Is it I could, I could imagine. <laughs> I could imagine what you. <laughs> you can. I'm just. Yeah, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just different <laughs> for different people. Um, right. But that's that's something that we we want to we want to change the street scene. We want to, people to stand there and think, ah, oh, that's got to be Hyundai because only they would do that like that. Right. Um, and in with Ionic, it's it's the pixels. Um, they and, and Ionic Six. I had one last weekend for the weekend, and on a, a really, even though you because you're so emotionally connected, because you know every story about the difficult journey of creating it with with an amazing team, but you you, you just smile walking up to it because they this is changing the street scene, the whole typology. That's Nobody very interesting. Has a typology that's, like that. That's so interesting that you say that 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 phrase changing the street scene because. Um, you're quite right that uh, 
that they become everything that you know cars are, are slightly wallpaper and so when yes. you see when you see something like the Ionic 6 it's kind of like misplaced punctuation in a sentence mm, mm, like yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're surprised Whoa. by it Hold on. <laughs> yeah and yeah. And, and if we could just go on to the if we, just, if we go on to the seven there's this incredible i know you've talked about this idea of st streamline and stuff in the six but for yeah. me in the seven yeah. there's this front line that, rem that from the front of yeah. the that goes all the way to the and back that was, is exactly yeah. like the locomotives you know what i mean Thank the streamline yeah i mean that was, is that, that, was is, those pictures were there I mean, we, what we did, we, we deliberately and very early said, okay, Ionic 6 is about streamlining. It's about the 1930s, 40s, 50s, when, when engineers started understanding how to flow through the air and, and, and what shapes you need. Man, it wasn't quite optimized, but that was, at the start of the project was, okay, how do we, how do we make sure we are visually efficient? So it looks like it's efficient as well as being efficient. There are a lot of incredibly efficient vehicles out there today but they look like the normal car so okay. how do we do that and, and really make it work so at the beginning of ionic 6 i had a t-shirt made that said 0.1x and everybody said oh, we'll never get to that drag coefficient i said i know but let's give ourselves a target and and then as somebody asked me a while ago they said well well basically you failed with 0.21 i said yeah but i'm happy failing at that level that's okay <laughs> um i think you, you and seem, then for you ionic seem, 7 sorry go on man sorry go on no, you go on, you go on. You're in the middle. It was seven. We took, we took, yeah, we took those principles into, okay, we have a three row SUV. You know, it was a big SUV. It's never going to be uh, a, like a fundamentally aero car, but we can take the principles to give it the best shot for that package, for that kind of size. And well, the challenge was, can we, can we make it work on this, on this uh, platform? flat platform, proportion, cal points a bit different. How do we get the length out of it? And, and, and yeah, the, the seven show car that we show, which is, which we've taken for, that is the production car, basically. It's uh, the production car actually looks better. Um, it, it just had that, that, that streamlined character to it. If you just look at the, the architecture of the cabin in top view, which you, you can't see walking around it, just the, the slightly boat tailing. If you remember the awesome XL1 from Volkswagen, Maximus Sony did a great that. job on that I car. I love that car, man. I think oh, Sasha I was in the car. studio at the same time. That, yeah. we, almost it's like scaling that up and an Audi A2. And you know, what, what are the principles of those cars that work? What is streamlining? Let's use that for a, for a big SUV. And uh, yeah, and so for a big SUV, it'll be pretty efficient aerodynamically, which of course helps in range. And it's, it's not actually always just about the range and how far you can go. It's how frequently you have to stop and charge. So taking the pain of charging so often out is a time saving um, as well. So yeah, we had a lot of fun on that project as well. But there's, al but there's also interesting things um, that kind of, uh, uh, often cars don't tend to address, um, they, they tend to address, I guess, functional problems like range or comfort but with the uh ionic 7 you talk about you have these things like a uvc stuff to uh, to yeah. sterilize the interior all that kind of which addresses in a way uh the kind of psychological place we're at now with yes. covid yes. And, yes. and all that and, and that's kind of unexpected we we talk for our interiors we we, we talk about a calm caring living space uh, so it's, it's, we're trying to design furniture, not car seats. We're trying to design, okay, if you really, in your living, in your home, you're like looking over in the corner, I have air purifier. Okay, what are the signals around us? It's not very difficult to see um, what's happening and piece those pieces of puzzle together. And, and hygiene, I mean, hygiene anyway is important. In Korea, um, especially advanced medical system here, amazing medical care, you know, we never had a lockdown during COVID here. There was no lockdown. There were, everybody took care. There were, there were different opening and closing hours. People naturally immediately all wore a mask. There, it was an interesting um, bit of Confucianism, but with freedom. It was, it was okay, it, it, we do it for the greater good. Our individuality isn't above caring for everybody. Um, and I'm, I'm living through this here, watching. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck because I can't go back home in Shanghai because my wife and son are in Shanghai. I can't commute anymore. So I'm isolated, stuck here watching this happen. And, and we're, we're working on this car, show car, and the signals are so huge around us that hygiene, 
the sort of aircraft like air cleaning system, um, filtering the air, cleaning the air, the, the positive pressure in the interior, the UVC lighting, the materials. The, our interior team looking at the UVC, of course, all the touch areas, quite often they're transparent because then you can shine UVC through them and they, they, they're sterilized from the inside. Um, and then our color team, Diana Kloster and her team, uh, Miss Hong doing the colors for that car, the, the wool is woven with fine elements of copper. Now, copper right. is a natural bacterial inhibitor. And so sure. and these, the teams are on it. like, okay, what have we never done before that we always wanted to try? You should, how much throw in trouble a, you, we get into? you should have an optional Faraday cage. Well, there you go. Well, basically, <laughs> cars are Faraday cages. I mean, they are Faraday cages, pretty much. I mean, that's that's, the, I mean, that's why you can you drive and get hit by lightning. That would be interesting, though, because there's this there's this kind of there's this obsession with privacy, internet, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Maybe you could activate the Faraday cage. <laughs> there's yeah. a button, and yeah. then you you know, no one could <laughs> block everybody out. I mean, these are the these are the kind of conversations that I love having, where you you well, from a joke, uh, you you realize there's a serious potential in that. There's a signal in that. Right. Uh, I was I was talking to Ellen, my wife, yesterday, and uh, I was saying, do you remember? Because um, I love talking about signals. When you see something, we have this funny conversation. You suddenly think, hold on, why not? And I, I was walking down Highbury in Islington in, in, in London. It must have been 97, 98, something like that. And we were just going down to see friends there who lived down there. And I heard a phone ring. And somebody about 10 meters in front pulled the mobile phone out of their pocket and answered the phone. And I'm like, <gasps> Elle said, what? I said, that's the future. I've just, that's it. It's like, and she said, what? It's just a phone ring. I said, no, 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 but that's going to be everywhere. That, that's, and this was before mobile phones. This was the first time I'd ever seen somebody answer the phone walking along the street. Now everybody who sees on the phone. But that was that when was these very trigger no, that, was, that was extraordinarily nostradamus of you, man, I have to Crazy, say. Crazy, right? But, but, we, but this talk about Faraday Cage or the talk about hygiene, when you start saying, why not? Right. That's the that, that's the environment we need. I, we love creating. We have these stupid discussions, which take you into a very very serious conclusion, and and, you tr- and you, because you just try, so- you let your hair down and you try something, and then you we're back not, to Envision seventy four. You are not a man who's afraid of the rubbish bin. Oh, I love the rubbish bin, of course. I mean, Sir Ken Robinson, his TED talk is one of my favorites. Um, man, if you're that, scared that, of getting the, it the, wrong, the the what well, that talk about do schools. Kill creativity. Yes, kill creativity. Is, is, is Iconic. Unbe- unbe- I mean, that's one of my all-time favorite. It's and every <laughs> he's kind of like Moses dispensing wisdom. It's it's extraordinary. It, it makes me speak. It, the great thing about it is so astute, but also so humorous. And right. and if you can if you can bridge uh, a really hardcore difficult topic with humor, you win. Because absolutely, people, because man. You, you absolutely, because it. It, yeah, because it's it's the. It's the soft delivery system. Yes. Yeah. You, and so you're busy laughing. Yeah. yeah. You, you're, you're laughing and then you're going, oh, hang on a minute. This is yeah, incredibly this is true. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is really big. Yeah. Yeah. And but when he talks about, about that, the, people, the, oh, go on. No, you go, you go, you go. Sorry. I was going to say, I was going to say, when he talks about the, the, the professors dancing uncontrollably. And you look at him there because I think he had polio, right? And he's like, his knees and everything. He's like, obviously it's not him. And it's just, it's so humorous. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> well, talk to me, talk to you about the rubbish bin, because I think that, I, I think that, um, you know, I think this gets talk, spoken about a lot. The idea of, uh, I've always found from an artistic standpoint that, that f- accidents and failure, are, are those are the kind of the gold mines of genius. Uh, yeah. If you're okay yeah. with it. I mean, I have to I have to flash back to, I mean, to Ken Robinson. The only reason I know that um, video was because Peter Vowder, who's at VW in the studio in Potsdam, he said, Sam, you have to watch this, you'll love it. And that that took me onto this trail of, okay, yeah, rubbish, uh, as you say. And, and is that something important to us? And so I remember I was asked by Hyundai in China, could I do a talk at their motor studio in Beijing? And uh, they had this beautiful um, sort of exhibition space, art space in uh, the 798 art district. And I said, well, I'd love to. And so they, I thought, well, how long do you want it to be and how many people? They said, about 100 people. And, you know, if that many people, I thought, well, 40 minutes, something like that's probably good. And so I did a presentation. And they said, oh, we want to do a flyer, Simon, for your presentation. Uh, what's it called? I said, it's, it's Simon's Rubbish Presentation. <laughs> and they said, 
oh, you, you can't call it that. I said, no, you must do, because that's the name of the presentation. It's the rubbish presentation. And I, I, I have this sort of hour-long, and I can extend it two hours or do it in 10 minutes, presentation <laughs> about how the rubbish bin has to become your friend as a creative. You, you have to get to know that really well, because 99% of the time, whatever you do goes there. So yep. set your expectations that what you do goes in the bin, and you meet your expectations, and you're a happy designer. In that moment where it gets chosen, you're over-delivering and you're even more joyous. But most of the time, what you do goes in a bit. And that's that you have to have a, quite a thick skin. You have to learn to not take things personally. You have to learn to let go and move on. Um, you have to learn to what in this culture will be called losing face. You have to learn to lose face admirably and carry on. And we as a leadership team, we have to help people realize they've not done anything wrong. It just wasn't the one we want to do. I remember we've just... We've just launched the new Kona, um, and uh, I remember the, the presentation of the full-size exterior models, and arguably, the one of the models was was just the best car there, but it wasn't chosen. And I sat with the designer and said, look, look you, you've done such a good piece of work. This is the best car there. It's just not the best Kona. It's just the wrong time for this and the wrong name for this. It's, it's, it's the best car there, but use that for the next projects now. Use that. Don't, you know, you can throw some stuff away, but sometimes you, you can, it's just the wrong timing or the right. wrong window for that opportunity. Um, so well, I'm a keen believer on, okay, hold on. When we start a new project, what have we done before? Does anything fit that didn't fit the other projects that might fit now? Uh, sometimes there's nothing, but other times you have said, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's uh, just put it in a drawer, not quite in the bin, but the <laughs> bin guys, this- everybody used to that. This reminds me so much of my time in advertising because because first of all, y- y- to really be you, you to really be creative, you have to be kind, you have to be kind of ruthless because you yeah. have to be able to churn out, just vomit out endless ideas and then be completely, as you say, without shame and saying, you know, that one's terrible. That one's terrible. But this one could be yeah. good. But yeah. then and but then recycling, as you say, because, yeah, th- it's, I mean, you sometimes that little idea is like we couldn't get it into that project. It didn't have the the space or we didn't have the money for it or it just didn't fit what we're trying to do. And, but it fits another project. Okay. And that's, I mean, we talk about churning out loads of ideas. I, I used to, I used to, you, you sit there, you do renderings and renderings take ages getting a beautiful rendering, but it's only one idea. And so I, I, I remember in my time Volkswagen and I started approaching differently. I said, okay, I'm going to use a, a, a big block of white paper and a thick black marker pen. And that's it. Because otherwise, they take too long on a drawing. Then I get precious. I don't want to get it wrong. Right. And, it, and you, you tighten up. So now, I mean, I came home yesterday with three blocks of A3 a paper. I do, I do to still sketch every now and again with a block of marker pens. And I, I'm just rattling off. Every five minutes, there's a new one. So, I don't, right. so you move on and you go through iterations. And some of them take you nowhere. But you don't mind because it's only taken a few iterations of five minutes. And you have no investment. Think, oh, that, yeah. Is, is it, there's minimal risk. Because you haven't right. invested so much time. And so for me personally, I, I churn them out. Just churn them out. And the first sketch is always crap. Because the perspective's wrong, the proportion's wrong. You go through three or four before you get the proportions right. And, and then you're trying to execute it. And, and so it's about trying to cut off the, 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 the nerves. It's about controlling nerves, basically. If you're a sports player. It's no good going on the field and being nervous because you don't perform. You've got to cut. You've got to get into that zone. Ignore the fact there are eighty thousand people around you. Just you've got your friends around you trying to do the same thing. Communicate work with them. And I find design teams. One of my favorite, I mean, favorite analogies uh, with a design team is any sports team, basically. Um, if you, I, mean, I, I absolutely love Netflix. I don't read books. I, I just, I, I, I watch Netflix instead. And so I Same. love the sports documentaries. And so, you know, when, when I heard that, the, the, like, the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan thing was coming up, it was like, oh, I can't wait for that. And to watch in that how Jordan realized that he could no longer do it alone. If he tries to do it by himself, he can be marked out of the game by the opposition. Back then it was Detroit Pistons, and they just took him out of the game. Um, he needed to use the rest of people around him. He needed the team. He realized that by himself, he wasn't strong enough and together they could do it. But then you got Phil Jackson on the sidelines. Phil is like, I'm, I'm trying to help them put a strategy together to make this work. 
they, the team still have to score the baskets and they have to try their own thing every now and again, just like a design team. You know, I'm myself saying, look, we're on the sidelines. Um, I'm, we're not scoring the baskets. The team's scoring the ball. We've got to try and get them in the right position to get it right and give them input. Do it a bit more like this. Try doing this. Try and do something yourself. Add the plus alpha, your own things as well, not only what we say. So it's very much like the relationship between coach and players on the pitch, how to get the best out of a team. And sometimes you have a bad game. They say, okay, okay, get up. What do you do? Analyze it. What did we do wrong? Why didn't it work? Um, How do we do it better next time? Analyze, analyze, analyze and put together a strategy for what you do next. Next game, Saturday, okay, who is it we're playing? Okay, yeah, uh, Lakers, let's go play Lakers. You almost have to, to be a great creative, I, I always thought that you have to do two things. You have to make things imagining no one's going to see them, because then mm. you, then when, you, when, you, when you're imagining no one's going to see what you're doing, you're free. Yeah, and then the other thing is too. you have no, sh- and then you want to have no short-term memory at all. Yes. Because the- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. And you have to, you know, when people say, God, that looks crap. Um, yeah, then you yeah, forget you it. Ignore that. Forget that straight away. It's yeah, like, it never happened. My, 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 um, my, I do have a, luckily a very, very short term memory. And I just, <laughs> I, I just, I mean, it was age. I'm just forget a lot of stuff. Maybe it's selective memory. No, no, no. I'm exactly the same way. <laughs> it's, it's, it's stunning when people will call me and said, um, I sent you an email. Did you see it? I say, uh, I can't remember. And then they say, hold on. They check. They say, oh yeah, you answered. I, say, I answered. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Man, I, I can't say, tell you how that happened. Say? You know, <laughs> was it intelligent? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did this, I agree? Thing, this, hap- <laughs> this happens to me all the time, man. It's, it's horrifying. The, the lovely thing about it, that is you don't have any baggage. It's like, it's dealt with. It's like, I was like, I'm the, Sanyap and I were talking in the lift the other day and he, he said, you know, if, if we add up all the cars we've done in our careers up until now, or we've been involved with, we're probably involved with more cars now in parallel than the rest of our career put together. Because Hyundai and what we're doing is so phenomenal globally with everything that's going on. And we, but to do that, you have to rely on your teams. You have to, you have to give direction, give space, give, give it a zone, expect something extra. And it's, it's, if I thought about it too much, I would just be so scared every day. <laughs> um, and I am. So that's I mean, a good thing you can't remember myself. anything. Exactly. I can't remember how I felt <laughs> yesterday. So it must be okay today. It's like a fish in a goldfish bowl going across the other side. Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. There's a window. You know, it's actually, side, it's oh. actually, my wife will take advantage of that. She'll be like, you know, she'll say, we talked about this. And then she'll see <laughs> the look of terror. <laughs> so like, well, we did. Like, yeah, yeah, you said you you, you agree. Yeah, well, <laughs> did I, did, I agree. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did I? <laughs> yeah, it's it's scary, isn't it? But that's maybe the age we got to these days to say. Yeah. But the, I mean, it is maybe an advantage, but it's uh, it's certainly with car design. It's um, you know, it, you do have to, as you say, if you have the rubbish bin coming back to that, you have to not worry about that. You have to get used to it. It's the threat of anything you do could change any time. And you know, some of the best cars I've worked on have stopped. And not because they've gone in the bin, not because they were bad. It's just that the whole there is a biggest picture behind everything. Right. And right. and a lot of the a lot of us, you know, I mean, we don't know the big picture. There are decisions that our leadership have to make. Um, that that we, we will we will uh, have to act underneath those decisions somehow. But you don't know the full story. Um, and that's just that's the way it is. I, I can accept that. I put it in a box by the window, and, and you know, and forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> it's done. God, you're a remarkably elastic individual. <laughs> well, yeah. As, as I said one time, I'll never forget. I was at a table. Uh, I was in auto chat in Wolfsburg with there were two. So I can, if things long enough ago, I can tell the story. Um, so we had uh, Walter de Silva, design leadership of the whole group, and two big tables. And topic we were talking about. This must have been just before I went to China, so 2007, something like that. And um, and I, you know, it's it's kind of. St- everybody's wondering what to say. There's a bit of competition between the brands. It's a bit stiff and it's a lunchtime conversation. I was like, ah, oh, it's getting really boring. I better, I better tell some jokes. <laughs> so at my table, it's like 10 of us. I start telling stories about stuff, which I the whole story. I was laughing. Then I realized the other tables come up and they're all standing around our table. And I'm doing this storytelling, trying to keep people amused. And one of the guys there, I forget who it was, said to you, oh, Simon. And it, was, it was Murat Gunak. Uh, Murat Gunak. Murat said, he said, Simon, you have... You have such a sense of humor. 
And, and, I, and I said, well, I have to have such a sense of humor working with you idiots. And, and <laughs> oh, half of the people laughed hysterically. The other half didn't know how to react because it was so on the edge. And yeah, I mean, you have to have a sense of humor working with idiots all around you, you know, <laughs> in the best possible way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find, particularly these days, the sense of humor is really a key to survival. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, I have been accused of having a reasonably good sense of humor every now and again. Um, make a joke out go, of anything. <laughs> can we go back to the DeLorean for a second? Yeah, I sure. Just, That's a sense of humor as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, but how long have you had that car? I... Um, I have to blame COVID for that one. Um, I, ah. well, good, yeah, I was, I was, uh, my, Ellen and Tom were in, living in Shanghai. Our daughter Anna studying, was studying architecture in Manchester at the time. And I was in Seoul and I saw an advert on Facebook for DeLorean out for sale from, uh, from another car designer, David Beasley. And, uh, I know him. I, yeah. Dave, I mean, I, I, he, great guy, lovely guy, been through quite a story he's got at the moment. And uh, he needed to sell a car, and I was the first person to contact him after he posted on Facebook. And as I contacted him, he said, ah, oh, that would be interesting. Then I took the pictures, posted them in our family chat, because there were four of us in family chat, and I said, what do we think of this? And <laughs> Anna and Tom were like, oh, yeah, yeah, do it. And Ellen, my wife, said, oh, it is pretty cool. And I was like, oh, the door's open on this one. There we go. That's, so that, said, that's all you need. That's, that's all you it. need. That was it. Um, <laughs> to quote Tom to, Cruise, to quote Tom Cruise in the first Top Gun, I saw the shot, I took it. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Um, it was that. I saw the shot, I took it. And that was what, 2000? It must have been 2000. It was early COVID time. So obviously March 2000, I guess. Um, but, the, but the story of that purchase goes back to probably 1978, 79 because I just started my secondary school and, uh, and the same school my brother was at in the Midlands in Warwickshire in England and um, got home one evening and we're having dinner with my parents and my dad says, well, how would we feel if, um, you know, if we, if we moved countries? And I was like, wow, well, that'd be kind of cool. You know, new set of friends and that, and we'll keep it in the same school, but then every holiday you'll, you'll fly back and forth. And we, we moved to Northern Ireland, um, heightened the troubles. Um, and yeah, my dad worked for DeLorean back then. And, uh, oh, I had no and idea. So, yeah, yeah. So me, I, I, as a little boy, as like a 10, 11 year old boy, I, my dad would take me to the field and say like, there's going to be a factory here and it's a field. And then <laughs> each school holiday I'd go home and there'd be more would be built. And so, yeah, there was a kind of sort of personal attachment to that. Um, well, and I, the story I, that's of that. An, that's amazing. Yeah. It's not a kind of man. That's an amazing, that's an amazing yeah, kind of glory. Yeah. And it's a, and it's yeah. a glorious thread that's that's i mean it's so it's so funny how things will happen to us when we're kids um, yeah and then we kind of and then they resolve themselves when we're grown up yeah and it's it's you know we're crazy lucky to be able to do that yeah. and uh and so that's that's you know we feel incredibly fortunate that we can yeah make that decision and, and buy the car i mean it helped david out as well david if you watch this hello uh, all the best hope you well i think he's up in <laughs> Gothenburg at the moment um but yeah, that was, um, that was fun. I mean, then, then the fun thing is, you know, I'm, it's COVID. I'm stuck in, in, you know, in, in Korea. Um, everywhere's locked down around the world and you're buying so where's a the, car where's, in England. Where, where's the, the cars in England? No, it's in Germany now. So it was in oh. England. Uh, we, <laughs> okay. it went to my parents first. So my, my, uh, I think David dropped it off of my parents and it was like a, a like a very hygienic handover and no contact and so on, sitting <laughs> right, in the garden right. discussing it, um, at a distance. And, uh, yeah, so then thankfully, thanks to my dad, they did, uh, did, uh, we did a whole thorough, like load of work on it. It didn't need much work, but we thought we just, just reconditioned the fuel injection system and so, so on. Five speed? Yes. Five speed manual. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so did a lot of work I, I, on it. I think that's, a, I, I think it's just, a. it's, it's such a perfect design, that car, the yeah, balance I mean, of it, the, the details it's, of it. And you, it's one of those cars. And this is one of the philosophies we have now with Hyundai is, are people going to want to walk up and say, wow, what is that? Or right. who? I mean, it's a story about Arnic 5. I was in Manchester last summer. Our daughter was graduating from university um, and uh, rented a, rent a hire, booked in a hotel in the middle of Manchester, a great place, right in the middle, so no parking really. And Hyundai UK, thank you, Hyundai UK, had said, do you want a car whilst you're in England? And I said, are you serious? He said, yeah, yeah. I, well, this is the perfect chance to, to 
have an Ionic 5 for a few days. And so they delivered this Ionic 5 to the hotel. And it's a busy street, and there's a Ford Transit van with the doors open, this, this guy delivering boxes. Uh, he's kind of salt of the earth, and I walk out with some bags, I'm loading up the Ionic 5, and this guy puts his boxes down, comes over to me and said, that thing's a spaceship. <laughs> you know what I love about has- the Ionic 5, man? Is that line, <laughs> that line that cuts across the, the door. It, yeah, it's just... Look at look at the precision in that. Look at our manufacturing guys. How how they've got to that sharpness and quality. Real respect but that, to those but, guys. Absolutely. But that's the thing, man. Is that first of all that line is so? It's just so. It's such a commitment mm, to the yeah, idea, sure. to the design yeah. of it. But also, yeah. as you say, I've when I see that kind of attempt in in other with other brands, it always somehow feels cheap. Mm. in the ex- in the mm. execution and i, I don't know i don't know what makes it you, i don't know what makes so what makes it not reduced. it's reduced it's simple there's nothing else going on it's just bold and straightforward and and the the, the actual attention in it the way it reacts to the wheels it just it's just you know you can put a line on the car and it doesn't work in the scenario and right. what the guys did on that and i wasn't involved in the earliest days of that project i sort of took it on halfway through um, as the main creative phase was done but the but the, the, the tension in the lines and the way they relate, it just fits on the car very well. And all the yeah. volumes, it's kind of monocoque um, feeling to the car. And it, it just, yeah, it does work. And it, I, I think your word's really important, commitment. It's such a commitment to like, okay, nobody's doing it like this. And, That's right. And it just, yeah, it just, just tung, over to the front wheel. As you follow that through, it matches what's happening on the front. There's no other triangle on the exterior. It's just pixels. Right. Um, the other bit though, my favorite bit, 95, is the tailgate shut line. If you look at the <laughs> C pillar coming down and the glass yeah. coming across and you have the surfaces come together and the shut line is on the edge. Yeah. I was like, I was in the virtual reviews uh, going through with our digital team and the manufacturing guys. I asked them to come, guys, are you sure you can do this? Because that's, because normally the side panel will come up, wrap over and then you have a shut line and we just went straight to it and put a line down. It's almost like look, putting a, a punctuate, a really exclamation mark at the end of a sentence, like, bam, this yeah. is the corner. And they said, yeah, we can do it. I said, are you sh-? And they brought the sections. They said, yeah, look, this is how we press it. This is where the welding, spot welder goes inside. Here's the detail. I think, you guys rule. This is, this is awesome. Because and that, and, they it's did just, it. and it's, there it is. It's, it's just crisp, man, that car. Just it's FYI, clean, it's that, crisp. That, my, yeah. my, my, that's Respect my next car. It, 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 it's, it's coming up. Uh, I have to, my lease is up on my current car, and that's going to be oh, the next do it. car. Please do it. Please man, do I'm, it. So, I mean, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But you know what I love is the uh, the part I love. God, this is, I feel like <laughs> I'm just, we're just nerding out. The, <laughs> the way that the hood overhangs the lights slightly and it's it's yeah. a little bit like alpha sz from the early yeah. 90s oh with the, yeah the monster which is, I, well i used to have one of those no <laughs> yeah the yeah Sony i've had to v6 yeah yeah i've had mm. all, i've all, i've had all manner yeah. of weird cars man yeah, excellent uh, but 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 it's like a really crisp ev- evolution of that yeah. kind of idea but better and i, I don't know man, yeah, I just, it's um it's, it's it's we're hoping it's kind of timeless it just sits there and you see it go past and it's like oh that plus Ionic Six go past it. Oh, again, uh, it, they're, they're just they're, they're, they're cyberpunk. You know, they're doing their thing. Right. There's a legacy. There's a story. There's a there's a. I, my my daughter rang me up uh, from Manchester. She said, "Dad, you're not going to believe what happened today." She's on. She's. I'm on a double decker bus, and she's with a friend of hers who's studying fine art. She's studying architecture, and her friend says, that, Anna, 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 "Look at that! Look at that car! Look at that car!" <laughs> Ionic Five. Right. She said, "Dad, it was Ionic Five, uh, and." It makes you know the whole team involved, the company, everybody involved can be so incredibly proud of the work to pull that together. It's such a, a big effort. And and to, to be able to just get in the car and plug in your coffee machine or plug in your hairdryer or whatever, and just it's just that lifestyle, move the move the console back and forth, zero gravity seats. It's not it's not just it looks great. It's it's got so much depth in the product sure. of of user focus. Of course it's Safety is the first paramount priority for us. Any human day we do, it's got to be safe. But then what is the user experience? What is it? How do you support people's lifestyle? How do you make sure they feel at home, but not doing in an automotive way? Do it in a, in a living space way, in a furniture way. And, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. And, and when you sit in that car, it just, 
yeah, you're not in a car anymore. You're in a form of mobility which is different. And I had a, a rental car those, in, uh, in. Are you going to have those rotating those rotating seat things in the seven that that are in the or is that that's all top secret? You can't, can't tell you anything. that. Can't tell you that. <laughs> okay. um, I mean, the, please, the please just make concept, a wagon. P- Please okay, make a, okay, a, a, a stake up. I'll quote you on make the wagon. I'll quote you on make the wagon. I had a fun conversation <laughs> with the head of European team yesterday, and he was saying, you know, wagons are really important in Europe. I said, Thomas, go ahead and make some. Make some. Just do have, Just come up with our job as creative is not only do the project we're asked, is to do the extra, like the silly, calm, crazy conversation. Do that. Show that. Let's see what it means to us. And we have a lot of those projects running because we have studios, and we have Hacks Har in America running the U.S. team. Thomas Berkler and his guys in Europe. We have Minchoku, China and India. We have a Japan team as well. We have teams here. Guys, what does your region need? What's new? What are the differences between what's happening in your regions compared to the, the global stuff? Is there something extra we need? And, and that is really powerful for the, our creators to every year come up with a few projects which are not on the list. Just say, what do we need? What you, just scare us. And, and sometimes it'll happen. There's one which will be coming out, I think, next year in the States where both European and American teams did an extra project. It was the same thing. I was like, what are you? Yeah, well, let's do it. So we can help communicate that internally and say, look, we've got this idea. We know it's not a project, but think about it. And that project, everybody thought about it. Thought, yeah, let's do it. And so it's our job to not only do what we're asked to do, but go that bit extra and experiment. And from these little conversations, well, let's have a go. Well, there's a long history of that, right? The Sunday, yeah, club, there was, exactly. the, the, Saturday, the Saturday club who built the extra day 220. There we go. That's it. I mean, <laughs> those, we, we don't have the Saturday club. We have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday club. <laughs> it's like, a 24-7 club. That, you know. yeah. But it's, it's, it is, it is um, you know, uh, I have to thank so many people for, for where I am now. It's not just me. It's like, we have these stories, inspirations with so many amazing people I've worked with in whichever country I've worked with. Uh, Starting off at Bentley in the in the in the nineties with just amazing projects for. I mean, oh, I guess, I, hang I, on a minute. Can I just do an emergency interruption? Yes, the of Bentley Bentley Continental T. Yes, Bentley Continental T. The, I've, I've got I, I've got some I've got a bunch of old cars, but they they usually I for some reason I've always been drawn to I've been drawn to cars like Group B cars or like yeah, kind of stuff yeah, that yeah. I've owned. Yeah, I love it. But but yeah. but now in my dotage as I approach yeah. peak geezeriness, my I've, God, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I just want to drive around in you old should. Bentleys. <laughs> ben, I mean, there's a, there's a preposterous sort of uh, feeling that a car so massive can go so fast. <laughs> right. And and it's and and the I mean you go back one car before the Continental T, just take the Turbo R. The Bentley Turbo R. I had a short I mean, what is it, ninety four, maybe ninety five, and I had a I had a, a dark grey short wheelbase turbo R with a red interior for the weekend. <sighs> and I'm what age am I there now? I'm a county back I'm like twenty six, twenty seven years old. And uh, and we and we we're driving from Crewe via Derbyshire up to Scunthorpe. So I, we go to Derbyshire, pick up a good friend of mine, Miles. He's still a good friend. We studied together engineering. Uh, and we surprise a friend of ours up in Scunthorpe called Matt. And the three of us are still very good friends. But we're cruising up, I'm cruising up. We're somewhere between south of Scunthorpe. And I'm coming into a set of roundabouts. And, and I'm, I'm changing gear on my fingertips. We've got column change, three-speed automatic gearbox. I'm, I'm going down the gears and up the gears. Oh, and I'm not moving my hands off the wheel. And and you, you suddenly, and Miles in the past, he's like, holy shit, you're just flicking your wrist and going up and down to the gears. And then I, <laughs> I slam the brakes on because we're on an entry road onto the whatever, what is it, M11 south of Scunthorpe. Slow it down and stop. But he said, what are you stopping for? I said, there was a hitchhiker. <laughs> and he said, are you kidding? He said, no, we're going to make his day. So we hang out the windows and look back. And this guy's sort of looking at us. He's got his thumb out still. So he looks back at us. And I say, well, do you want a lift or not? And he's, okay. And he comes, and you, I wish I'd filmed him getting into the back of the car. Now, if you hear this, whoever you are, please contact me. Because I, I was a glorious conversation. He got in, and he sits in the back of this red turbo eye, puts his rucksack on the side, and, and there's this burr walnut picnic table in front of him. And he kind of pulls it down. He's like, Phew. So I turn around to him, and I give him, a, give him the immortal question, where do you want to go? <laughs> and he said, well, yeah, what direction are you going? I said, no, no, no. Where are you going? We're dropping you at home. And he said, well, 
well, I live in this little village somewhere. Da, da, da. It's okay, we're going right there. And so we, we take this guy and we, we drive. It's a, it's a very normal, like, village, town, English house, detached, semi detached, sorry. We drive up this driveway in this Bentley Turbo R. And these two young guys in the front seats, and he kind of gets out of the back seat. His family's at the window looking at his sitting room, like, what? I was like, yeah, <laughs> nice knowing you, all the best, and we go. He's going to have a story to tell about that forever. And we gave him, we gave him a lift. We helped him as out. As will you, man. And as do I. And it's all about stories. It's all about storytelling. And it was, it was just this charming kind of, oh, why not? We, we don't amazing. do good enough deeds for people. We kind of get in our own, our own world of selfishness and thinking about me, me, me. And, and I, I, I have another example. A couple of years ago at the LA show, I was at the LA show and we had the designers night. Uh, wherever it was, and I decided rather riskily I was going to walk back to downtown my hotel. And uh, and I and I had like well, that's just about, weird in LA. Exactly, nobody <laughs> walks. Right? No, it's just but, weird, man. Yeah, and 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 possibly dangerous in hindsight. But I you know, I decided, you no, know, I've got I've got two hundred bucks in my pocket. I'm going to try and spend it on the way home. And uh, and it was probably one o'clock in the morning, something like that. And, and there were a lot of people coming to me asking for money who were in a very, very like bad situation. And I decided I was going to give every the chance to tell me about their situation and how they ended up where they are and why, and then I'm going to give them some money. And so I asked them, tell me a story. Tell me a story and help me understand your story and why you're here. And then I'm going to give you some money. And by the time I got back, the last guy was super lucky because my last note was at 50 bucks. <laughs> and uh, and he was telling me a story and he told me about how difficult it was. And then we have to realize how fortunate we are in what we do and where we go. And so I, I've got this completely clear mind that whenever somebody comes to me and asks, if I have some money, I'm going to give them some money. I can't solve the situation for poverty around the world or whatever. But in that tiny microcosm of the, the influence I have, I'm going to help somebody. And uh, and that... Next time, if I ever meet you, Simon, I will tell me ask story. you... Uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to ask you for some cash. Yeah, <laughs> don't bother the story. Yeah, so, I won't bother the yeah. story about it. Just think, listen, man, do you have any cash on you? I need a couple yeah, of I mean, <laughs> But I usually don't. That's the crazy thing. And when I, But if I do, I will. And that's, you know, I guess, you know, with all this, you know, we're lucky living in four different countries and working here and with, with amazing opportunities. But there is the flip side. Like, look, if we can do something, let's try and do something. And that's, uh, yeah, that was, um, yeah, part of the, like, giving. My wife works for many charities. And, and works in kids' education, actually about nature. Helps kids understand how important nature is to us and so on. And that's, that's really a flip side for me when we talk you know, really seriously about sustainability and circularity and, and what, what's happening on the planet. We're only here once. We, our kids look at me and say, you know, Dad, your generation messed things up. What are you doing about it now? And so with our next six, when we talk about ethical uniqueness, that car looks completely unique, but it has an ethical reason why it looks unique. We're trying to use less energy. We're trying to give it a streamlined form. It can go further, use less energy, all the materials we use. That, and that's, that, you know, that's all part of storytelling, but for a reason you can believe and really believe what you're trying to do. Well, they're, 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 they're functional stories. They're, yeah, exactly. They're, story, they're stories that, will ho- that, ha- that have a, a goal to achieve something good. An ethical story. They have the ethics behind them. Um, yeah. I, I want to. There was one when we talk about functional stories, good stories. I I, I was listening to your podcast with Sasha, uh, and he's a good friend of mine, of course. Uh, hi, Sasha, if you're there. Um, but I remember great story. I, I, we should also we, say thank you. I, we should say thank. I should say thank you for introducing us, man. For the context, was, yeah. I mean, yeah. Sasha, I first met with uh, in Potsdam studio many years ago, and he was like, yeah, as we as everybody knows, angry Sasha. He loves an argument, and I, I love the guy for that. We had great arguments, and he was one day standing there with me looking at the, uh, what is it, Elantra. And he was telling me how wrong that car is because it's, it's too loud and it's the screen. It looks like it's got 400 horsepower and, uh, and I was telling why it's okay. And, uh, and, and we're having this argument and I said, well, okay, let me ask you in a different way. When was the last time you played basketball? He said, what do you mean? I don't play basketball. I said, okay, well, hold on. You're wearing basketball shoes. You like the look, but so you're lying <laughs> to me. You don't actually play. And he looked at me and said, and if I remember right, he said, you bastard. The problem with you is you're too bright. You know, but so, so that was, that was well time. done, sir. Yeah, I was like, boom. You eviscerate. I wish I could say I planned it, but it was just spontaneous. 
But um, but there is there's something there where we, I think, car design in some companies got into a vulgarity, which not naming the brands is just just it's just offensive. Um, sure. But if we can find that sweet spot of either complete functional efficiency, um, ethical stories, great. And when it goes too far and it's just in your face loud, um, then it's not going probably not going the right way. Well, I, I, <laughs> the brands w- w- which we shall not mention, yeah. I, I feel like the, the 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 there's there's no idea the, they they those that those brands have fallen in love with the idea of loud, but there's no actual idea behind it. It's just it's um it's just loud gesticulation. Yeah, it's gesticulation. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, and that's, and, and, it's an interesting, I wonder, I often consider cars in terms of, if I'm driving it, what will the reaction to it be from other people? What, what are they thinking about me as, a, as, as the person driving that vehicle if I'm the owner? And, and there, there's a, that, that was really interesting when in my time Rolls-Royce and Bentley back then, where it, you, could be, you could drive a Silver Seraf, or a Bentley Arnage, and and basically the same the same one the same car, but with clever detailing gives each brand their own positioning. But we had to share the body shell, and the Silver Seraph. It was quite amazing how often people would just give me the finger. <laughs> I don't know, but not, them, in, but, but not in a Bentley. In a Bentley, you'd sit and people would just look and just go, right, just it's and, and, that, and it, it's it, you take the psychology of that scenario. And they, okay, so what are people going to, what, what are our customers? What questions are they going to get when they get out of the car and somebody comes to them? When they're driving the lights up, how are people going to warm to them? Have they made a, a great purchase? And when I think about Hyundai and what, well, I'm, I'm sort of amazed to be part of this journey that Hyundai is on at the moment, how sort of acceptable we are, how Korea globally is this kind of really attractive outside bet because We've never really we, we we're kind of comfortable as a nation as a as a we can we're kind of in there and everybody will like us. Um, just look at music, whether you like K-pop or not, uh, K-media. Incredibly successful globally. There's this Korean wave around the world, and and I guess Hyundai's part of that. Um, and then we so you're not offending somebody with the brand, and when your design has such a story and such a depth of functional sort of uh, correctness and functional support, you become and you've done it for a reason, you become incredibly attractive. When I, when I drove back to my, uh, our apartment here in Seoul on Friday night last week in Arnix 6, and I live in a, quite a small town, but small block, nine floors high, there are only 18 apartments, and we have our little security hut out front. I, I mean, it's so safe in Korea. You don't really need security because it's wonderfully safe. The whole culture is that there's so little criminality and street crime. It's just fantastic, so little. But our security guard follows me um, because I'm normally coming home in a different car and he follows me and I park and he just comes, he looks, he's just, he can't, he can't speak any English, but he's like, whoa, he's looking at the car and he looks and he's like, Phew. and, and we, we like, I mean, I like to think on one hand, we're, we're trying to make people proud of, of, of Hyundai, uh, nationally, uh, and the other around the world trying to make people just happy that they've done it. It's, it's a good purchase. It's quality. It's a good price. It's not well, it's, bottle, very, it's not loud, but it's, it's got a functional reason. It's interesting what you say, because uh, there, I, I've, I love cars and I, I, I as I said, I, I bought and owned, a, I've been lucky enough to own, have owned a bunch of unusual and oddball cars, but the, there are cars I cannot buy because I can't see myself. I don't like the idea of how people might see me huh. in that car. I agree. I'm with you. <laughs> you know, you know what you. I mean? Which car? Which car? Then tell, come on, give me, oh. give me an example. Because I'll get. I promise well, okay, you, I'll give you an example it, afterwards. Okay, I could get. I could. The, I've not really owned many modern cars. The only modern car, sports car, I've owned was um, an 07 um, Aston Martin Vantage, because yeah. that yeah. Henrik Fisker design is yeah. so exquisite. Yeah. But also, when you're driving that car. It's not shouty. It's just it's just exquisite. James Bond, you become James Bond. You just so taste, <laughs> a little bit. It's taste. It's, it is. Yeah. My dad has one. My dad is eighty four, but he still drives his Aston Martin. He has a, a, a new, a new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 2006. that's what I had. A, I had an 06. I had an 06. Yeah. What what color is his? Yeah. 
uh, gray, the, the dark silver gray. Meteorite gray. That's what right. I had. Wonderful. Yeah. That's it. But but there we go. but I would never. I, so I, mean, I could. I can't drive. I would never be able to drive. I can't drive. I would never drive a Lamborghini. I can't drive a Ferrari or any of those things because I feel like when you're driving yeah. those things, you're not. You're not that interested. It's not. I don't think you're interested in the car. You're interested in what the car is saying about you in in, in a very specific kind of yes. way. Uh, the understated uh, level of taste is important. Uh, it's just yeah. is it? Do you have people will think? Oh, he has taste, or he's just showing off. And and there's the, there's the fine line sometimes. I feel like if I was driving in a Ferrari, people just think I was a knob the entire time. Yeah, yeah. Or other words which also have four letters. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, quite a few words actually. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, me. I mean, it may sound weird, but what I and and, and even though it's it's an absolutely brilliant car, um, Luke Donkerfolke is the biggest fan of these in the world and has a number. But me, I I can never see myself driving a nine eleven. <laughs> I'm just no. I'm English, you know. Right. I'm, no, it's got to be an Aston Martin. It's it's it's. Um, is that what you would choose? Oh, yeah, oh, Aston Martin is on my list. Um, but just haven't got one yet. There's no space in the garage at the moment because the DeLorean's in the way. Um, <laughs> but one car, I, I one car I have which um, which was bought because we needed something to tow another car was. Um, which was an was it a COVID purchase or just before COVID? I can't remember. Um, but we have this we have this 1988 three door Range Rover. Oh. Uh, not an expensive car. Not an expensive. No, but that's four-door. glorious, man. But but to sit but to sit in on in the tailgate, you know, if you go to a cafe in Germany and the parking's all full up and there's nowhere to park, you could just sit in the tailgate, fold it down, sit in the tailgate, drink your coffee, and very smugly look at all the Cayennes and Touaregs and think, I've got a real one. <laughs> it's a wonderful feeling. It's just, is it, yeah, is it, it an interesting, it's is it an interesting color? It's agricultural. Oh, it's, it's in the, it's off white. So it's beautiful. <sighs> it's off white with a tan interior. It's just, yeah, it's gorgeous. Say, that's, a, that's um, an amazing spec. And, so, it, and it, I actually, when I had some work done, it, done on it, uh, this is pretty anal, but I, I, I said to the guys working on it, <laughs> could you, please fully restore the tailgate just you know get do do the bare bones restoration of the tailgate lower now this may sound completely mad but if you know the car you'll know why because as you open that and you and you it, it's just the performance and i'm getting made at the moment some burberry cushions just to put on it you know it's like <laughs> open that burberry cushions just like yeah yeah drink a coffee i've got my mobile there i can sit anywhere and, and it's just it's driving it's you it's interesting how because of safety and airbags and that, how we cars are, are quite claustrophobic. You don't feel it, but when you sit in a car like that, and the pillars yeah. are so slim, and the belt line yeah. is so low, the window is so big, you drive like I can see out. <laughs> it's right. like, wow, look at that! It has extraordinary. I mean, it's, it's actually fast. That's it's, a glorious it's fast. Car. It's fast. It, I love those man, and a friend of mine has one, and he's yeah. always raving about what a delight it is to drive because you're just sort of drifting. Yeah. Down. And as you say, the glass yeah. house is incredible. I mean, yeah. I always, I always yeah. marvel at the like the Delta. I had a, I had a Delta uh, Integrale, oh, yeah, which I just car. sold, which I just sold. But I was always amazed that, first of all, how com- like I'd park it next to a, a normal car because I take my kid to school in it. Yeah, and I, yeah, and, and, I would, and and it's and it's cool. tiny, but yeah. four seats, four doors, amazing mm. visibility. Yeah, great performance. Was that was that the wide arch version of that? Was that yeah, the, yeah. Like, the flat I had an, yeah. I oh, mean, of course, man. Maximum steroids. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. And and but the cool thing that's still acceptable. That's in the Bentley camp of cool. <laughs> right. It's because because you right. have the you have the true rallying. It really happened. It's got the story and it's right. And he right. went into rallying. That's a that's a glorious car. A beautiful piece of car. What what happened to Lancia? Whatever happened to those guys? Uh. What, what a brand. God. Well, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I at one point I had a Stratos, a uh, 037, a uh, Delta S4. I mean, I had all, and like you say, and then what now did it's you the do? Epsilon. What? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's but, just depressing. <laughs> uh, it, it is. It's a, yeah. I mean, let's let's hope. Let's hope with the new guys there, they they can rebuild it and, um, and do some icons. Um, and the, they are. The I think car, they're relaunching the Delta as a. I think they're relaunching the right. Delta as a let's, as an electric car. I think. Let's hope they take steroids to do it. Um, let's hope they're smoking something because they need to do an icon. They need to not do the normality. Um, right. uh, I think, well, that's something, certainly me, if I were there and our crowd that are working here in Hyundai, uh, we would probably say, okay, wh- where's the, 
where's the which is the car which is going to scare people in the decision process do that one um, Absolutely. Well, okay. So he, let me ask you this. I, I'm not sure if you can comment on this, but when Lamborghini yeah. reissued the Countach, I was just yeah. so kind of simultaneously enraged and sad and disappointed. And and yeah. because if you're going to take that name, I don't. I my thought was, don't even make it look like the old one. Just make it look entirely new, like something radical yeah. that looks nothing like what was. Because all yeah. they did was this. It's this sort of. It's almost like a body kit you get at the gas station. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean? That you put on. You put on your Aventador. <laughs> I know exactly what you. I know what you're saying, and I saw a huge debate around that car as well. Watched it. Um, the the uh, you're in a, in that situation. You're really difficult. No, yeah, that's difficult. Do you carry it on like Mini did with Mini sure. and did another one? Um, do you? I remember back then with Mini where you had the, if you like the BMW Mini, which is a Mini Mini, and you had what what Rover had done. They did two amazing little concepts, the names of which I can't remember, but they were just oh, that was if you like t fast forward, take Isigonis to this time point. What would he do with for the next one with right. the what's around you? and? If you did that with Gandini for the next Countach, what would you end up with? That, that would be interesting because then you've got sure. the mindset of disruption that those original creators had, right. and 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 the time has changed to the new a new set of signals which you need to bring into the product um, or into the design and into the execution, which would probably end up with a different solution. And so you could almost say one route is to cash in on it and just do the same old thing, which is very European, very most big brands and Lamborghini part of the VW group. Um, maybe that's what they're comfortable with. Um, I think if you take in Gandini and, and a crowd of those kind of mindset, they would have done something different. But you, well, you're exactly you go, right. Then. Because, because but that, that's right. Because when Gandini did that in whenever it was 72, whenever yeah. it was, um, it was, it was, it was radical. Spaceship. And, and, totally yeah, spaceship. And, and, and I, and I, I was just hoping that it would, they, they had, as you say, taken that, idea the mindset that spirit yeah, yeah and yes, so let's, exactly. be rad let's be radical again all right look i've just I mean, realized absolutely. that I mean, we sorry I, I don't i feel like i'm taking up too much of your time man we've been blathering oh, I, I get, like I, like, I like a podcast <laughs> so i thought i'd do open end because because it, it might go past it <laughs> you, cleared the whole, I, you cleared the whole I mean, day you, cl you cleared the whole I, week what I, uh, we're not quite you're not quite that popular <laughs> yet so but um hold on <laughs> let me look away calendar i'm okay go on, we can keep the issue have more so obviously i got a little bit more time no problem yeah, well, well, by all means, man. I mean, uh, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. You, you, you know, you, uh, were you about we're talking spaceships. I, I was going to say, I mean, I'm a bit guilty. I remember back then when we did the first modern day Continental GT, and uh, it was interesting. It was just, it was just as Volkswagen bought Bentley. I remember the split Bentley Vo Rolls Royce then, where BMW got Rolls Royce brand, and and we went to VW. And I remember then we, as all the all the guys came across from VW and some fantastic, I mean Hartmut Farkas, Geb Pfefferler, these guys, fantastic guys came across and wow, such a respect because what they were doing, Golf Four was then just coming, you know, wow, what cars? And they said, well, what's what is a Bentley? And I, I gave them this presentation which connected to our legacy, our type Continental, the muscle, the lights, how we interpret that into a modern day car because. We were doing something new. It was completely different scale, and, and it could work. And and I remember the conversation. And we sort of said, "Look, the Bentley is a tiger. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's got haunches. It, it's a tiger." Uh, and they said, "Well, if Bentley is a tiger, then what's a Volkswagen?" And one of my friends back then he said, "Well, it's a Beetle." <laughs> and it, was, it just everybody burst into hysterics in the room. Um, I, it wasn't me who said that. I think it was Darren Day who said it was a Beetle, of course. Um, but. But there, you know, it is a fine decision point you have to make. Do we, do we stay within the legacy uh, and advance it? Does it stay very close and extend it like 911s and 911, 911, 911? And that's what they've tried to do with Countach, okay, just the next one. Um, I don't think necessarily decisions are right or wrong. It's just, you know, it's just what suits the company, what the company needs to do. It's a different way of doing it. And so... I know there's a big Ferrari around the Countess. Um, would I have done it like that? Mm. <laughs> I have a if I had the, not. Wow, the chance. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I would probably, with the mindset we have the, these days, is disrupt more. Right. Maybe, well, I mean, and that's, the, the, that's the, 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 I guess, what we've been doing all our lives. It's got to it's be pretty... Um, 
when the Ionic 7 comes out, man, it's going to be pretty fantastic for you and your team to to look at these three cars, each one quite different, uh, yeah, but quite radical in their own way. I mean, that's that's got to be something to be really proud of, I would think. Um, honestly, you know, the team, the work, the, the guys we have, they they're kind of the small resource relative that we have for the for the number of projects we're doing. The quality of the teams, how the teams are growing, and then and how we're all growing together. We're all saying, "Well, why don't we let's just try this? Let's have a go. Let's do stuff." And 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 that mentality is delivering cars like this. And a team can be incredibly proud. Um, the difficult thing with doing cars, which is so iconic, sometimes if you look back in history at all the real icon cars that we as designers say that's an icon, many of them have not been commercially very successful. Um, and and we cannot afford to go into the non-successful icon la- layer, uh, and and that's something why, where why with, is with that, seven. Though? Why is that? Do you think? Well, it's why it's, why it's, is it's what, career what is, limiting. What, what, is, <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? If you, if you, the uh, you mean as a, as, shareholders, <laughs> they need to make profit, <laughs> and and we're not selling any of those. And who's to blame? It's always design. No, hey, but company, then what, don't, what make, but, don't, don't but what makes that. a but what makes a <laughs> what makes what it. If something's iconic, doesn't that make it? Is it not de facto successful because it's iconic, or there's a? There's... Um, well, I think you can define success in terms of the acknowledged uh, freaks in that field who think it's the best thing ever. Um, look at Audi A2. You know right. what a phenomenal car on many levels: functionality, uh, silhouette. You know Stefan Zilaf, I think in Tom's England on that car. Those what a brilliant car! Not a commercial money maker even though it's an icon and we'll respect it. And so there's a fine line that we have to find which does the icon thing and makes money and isn't right. just a designer's field trip having fun. It, there's a commercial reality behind what we do sure. too. Um, if we look at architecture, you know, um, Frank Lloyd Wright, just some of the most iconic houses in the world. Why, why aren't there loads of those? You know, why isn't everything like that? Um, and so that becomes, you know, that comes the balance we have to find. And, and that's that's the tough thing. What we do, we we you stick your neck out quite a long way, and and I think you'll see in the next year, even before Ionic Seven, some other stuff coming out. We're doing where I think people are looking. Oh, <laughs> hmm, Hyundai, wow! So there's more Man, stuff coming, look, I, not I, even just Ionic Seven. I I look, people are already. Um, I've been sort of watching with such eagerness because I'm such. I'm always hungry for rad. I'm I'm always hungry for something radical. Yeah, yeah. I I, mean, for me, we, the most important thing in art uh, or in, in design is just, I just want to be surprised. I just want yeah, to look at that, it and I just want to look at it and go, shit, I never saw that coming. And that wish looks, I thought and, of that. Yeah, and wish, wish I, I thought, thought of that. that. And, and, and it's so true, man. I say, wish I, th- and, 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 and it happens in art and everything. I yeah. say, I wish I thought of that. And then I get angry that I didn't think of it. <laughs> I remember having a conversation with Varkus, Hartmut Varkus, who, he was head of Volkswagen Group Design. The group, uh, and what a what a guy! He, everybody I knew, every designer, because uh, designers are often quite you know they have their favorites or not. Everybody thought the guy was the monster of of style, nobility, elegance, design. Just what a guy! And I I remember I was I went into the presentation room in Volkswagen Design when I was still there, and at the time I still worked for Bentley. I was on Sukhumnan, and and I walked in and there was the Golf Four in the middle of the room, and this presentation room is. Anybody VW will know is Valhalla is the name of the room. They all call him Valhalla. And so in Valhalla, and Varkas was standing there just looking at the car, typical designer pose, looking at the car. And I stood, went in, stood next to him. And he, he looks at me, he said, you know, knows me, he says, now I wonder why it was so difficult. <laughs> and that's the interesting thing. When, when you're working, when you look at that, and it's so reduced and so simple, if at the end of it, you can say, why was it so difficult? You really achieved something because you've got sure. down to a level of simplicity and you've got down to a story there. And, and, you know, he was, I mean, but what a guy he was, he, he would stand looking at side views. And it was the days when we do full size, full size tape side views or Photoshop side views printed out. He would just stand looking at it for ages and ages. And then he'd say to you, uh, just try this. And you look at it. Oh Yeah. <laughs> there it is, you know, it's, uh, quality, right. and and that 
that back to basics, taking time to analyze and, and really observe and say, why, what is and what isn't working? What does it need and what do we try? And, and having a go, that's something we, we, with working on a computer screen, uh, we, we don't stand back and look at it big enough quite often and look at it full size. And, and I, I, one thing I love with our teams, and we had a little sort of creative scrum of designers recently, and I said, guys, tomorrow, let's have a full-size review uh, on the big screen. And they were like, Sam, you have no time in your diary. And I said, no, no, it's not for me. It's for you. I want you guys to have that review. And you as six people here, there are two rules for this. Whoever's standing up presenting their work doesn't get sensitive to criticism. And whoever gives input gives positive input to make it better and doesn't criticize. Nothing's wrong, we just make it better. Um, and they were like, okay. And the next day, I, I sort of snuck past them. I walked through the back of the studio and the six of them were around. They were having a discussion. They were analyzing and discussing and helping each other like a basketball team, going for different, trying different angles on how we can make this work. It was so beautiful. And for exterior design, that's the difficult thing to get people working together because we so want to own it ourselves it's my thing and there's other you, you can still own it but help each other with input and develop a design so you work as a team and then you're not isolated you're not by yourself it's it's a you are using the group intelligence but it's still your vision but you've got support to try and help and as i said the, the people giving the input don't be upset if the person presenting doesn't take that input but you have to accept it listen to it analyze it do it and that was really beautiful to see. I was so happy with his team. And that was a mixed team. Some from America, some from Europe, some from Korea, all different backgrounds, having a go. And yeah, that was, that was it's, it, that's the, the teamwork we need and that, that passion to support each other and, and, the, and the friendships to get good creative solutions sometimes. Well, you have to, if you create the right, it's all about creating the right atmosphere, right? You, yeah. have to you have to create a place yeah. where it's okay to, to laugh at each other. It's okay to say stuff that's stupid. It's okay to, to ignore stuff. It's okay to get it wrong. It's okay, it's to, okay to make mistakes. And, it, and you mentioned that conversation with the with, uh, European team about something. Where I was like, this is like, oh my God, no. Um, I, I remember having that conversation in China with the team where in a little studio in Yentai, uh, middle of like nowhere in China, relatively speaking, and uh, had a lovely team. And... Uh, and I said, let's let's sit together and sketch together. Let's let's do a sketch war, sketch battle together. And um, because the guys were was sort of mm, you know you know not confident or not self analyzing, and we created a wall of sketches of all the best sketches we could find around the world online of car sketches. And we said, okay, we sketch until we feel our sketch is good enough to put on that wall. And the designers started self analyzing. Now, my sketch is it good enough? Not yet. Keep going. Do another one. Keep going. Ah, yeah. And Lynn. One young designer who lives in Wuhan, actually, where, where COVID started. He's, a, he's working back down there instead of in Hyundai now. And Lin did this sketch of this back end of, of this car we're working on. And I said, Lin, I have no idea whether that is just completely wrong or genius because it's so different. That, but that we have to take it forward. Um, I have, honestly, it just might not work. It might just go horribly pear-shaped. But at least we tried. We took that route. Um, a bit like when you drive somewhere and you try a new route. And sometimes you get there and think, what? Oh, that was awesome. You saved me 10 minutes. Or you arrive there, you turn and go back. It doesn't matter. Try it. And his back end became the back end of the car. That was the production car. And when the seniority from Hyundai came over to China to look at that, they looked at, are you sure this is a facelift and not a new car? Um, because it just moved it on so much. And that came from, if you like, the confidence in trying that something different. Because we had lots of normal ideas too. Um, and you can always go back to that. So taking the chance, like you said earlier on, in a short amount of time, take the chance, have a go. Just let your head down. Don't worry about anything. If you already have something good, you can try anything because you can always go back to that. There you, you go. <laughs> always try in conclusion, there you Done. go. <laughs> in conclusion, full stop. That's what we do. As I always say to Mike, this is what we do. We get into Man. trouble. The, honestly, Simon, it's been such a joy to, talking to you. I mean, it, you're just a tsunami of, 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 of yeah, all sorts of <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, of interesting ideas and 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 I mean, I, I listen, man. I, I, if you're ever looking for an intern. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I could do the internship. That could be me. You know, like, no, no, no. We didn't even talk uh, about punk rock music yet. I mean, I thought we were going to talk about music. You know, are you into punk rock that? music? Oh man, I yeah, totally. 
I mean, that was, what? yeah, yeah. I Me mean, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I was 10 years old, Sex Pistols, God Save the Queen, you know, on the barge, on the Thames. It was, I was it never was, a sex, was I, was never, I was never a Sex Pistols geezer. I was a Clash geezer. The Clash, London Calling. <sighs> just, I sit in my car, oh. driving down to Nam Yang, and I'll just wake Siri up and say, play me 70s, 80s punk rock music, or play me <laughs> The Clash, or play, yeah. play me... Yeah, oh, what is it? The Damned. You know, give me some Damned <laughs> for a while. And then, fantastic. What about the uh, Stiff Little Fingers? A little bit. Not so much my thing, but really? still a couple of songs. Amazing. Okay. I mean, then you get into like the Buzzcocks, that kind of stuff. The Jam. Like, the Jam. I mean, then you're getting into New Wave, but the Jam, I mean, brilliant. That was amazing. Eaten Rifles. Then, Eaten Rifles. I mean, <laughs> what, what, what stuff? I mean, what amazing time of disruption in the music scene. Uh, and what I loved was... about what I what I loved about punk music, and then what I loved about early rap music was it had a purpose. Oh, it was function. It was functional. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, and it was. It appealed to the lifestyle of a generation, and yeah. one part of a generation. And that, yeah. if, in all good design, was music or architecture, it, it appeals to a certain group, and they targeted a group. I mean. I'm sure, you know, Malcolm McLaren pulling the strings there, just like right. the K-pop managers do these days. They're appealing sure. to the, that group. And, and sure. that was the time. That was the time of huge change. Um, I mean, punk rock out of England, you had the Falklands War in the early 80s as well. And yeah. the whole thing was going to Queen, 25th anniversary. And when, I watch videos of, uh, when I watch videos, I was, I was watching videos on YouTube. I fell down some wormhole. I, I really love YouTube because you can just fall down these wormholes oh. of the most yeah. random stuff. And I was watching videos of England in the 70s and 80s. I thought, shit, it looked so yeah. depressing. But yes. I, don't, I don't remember it that way. No. Well, that, that's luckily we didn't have the internet then. Because yeah. uh, if we did, we'd see all the stories. I, I, <laughs> honestly, I believe a lot of people say there's so much bad going on in the world. I'm not sure whether there's so much more bad than there was. It's just that we hear about it more because right. we couldn't before. Um, right. And the, I, I remember sitting in with my daughter in, uh, in Leeds when she was doing foundation course in art. And uh, we talked about, because Bohemian Rhapsody had come out of film. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, if you like this, we should watch Freddie Mercury at the Live Aid concert. We should, that would oh, be on YouTube. I, watch, I just watch. watched that the other day, man. <laughs> I just watched it's that amazing. the other day. Hey, I mean, oh, what are you <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Just, there's connecting to the lifestyle. Yeah. He, he, I'd never seen that audience participation like that right. before and yeah. the, the raw talent of yeah, freddie murphy starting well, playing piano his with the voice, voice his voice is just the the kind of the the kind unbelievable of just, uh, goosebumps yeah. just goosebumps now yeah. thinking about it yeah and, same, I did, same, uh, same. I was, and i didn't go to the concert i was right. in england I, I didn't what an idiot i could have been there i didn't go i was i didn't go either oh. yeah. and that's one of the way you think if you are somewhere and something's happening, you have the chance. You start thinking, oh, it's a bit of an effort. Do it. Because there'll probably never be a second chance. The, You're right. And, and I will say travels. this. I will say every yeah. time, every time, I, 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 I'm always slightly reluctant and then I'm always happy I did it. Exactly. It's, it's we were, I, I talked a little bit about travel earlier and how we take every opportunity to travel. And uh, my, my wife is this just amazing trip organize a planner, like finding cool stuff to do. And we, we did one trip. We, we had a goal for our time living in China that we would visit every province in China as a family before we leave China. That was our goal. There are 32 provinces in China. <laughs> um, we didn't succeed, we, we, but it's a tough goal. We visited 24 provinces in China as a family. And one of, our, uh, one of the very memorable trips was down to Tibet where we, we started this trip in, in mid-northern China in Xining. We took the 26-hour train overnight to Lhasa. And this train goes over the Himalayan plateau, 4,000 uh -huh. meters high, this Amazing. train. Right? And you wake up, you're four in a cab in this window. You just don't need a TV because the window is this just amazing vision of, of landscape, which you never experience in Europe. And then we come down off the plateau into Lhasa and we, we do this trip down day by day, different places through Tibet. And we go to temples and i I've, i'm all templed up i just don't like seeing temples i've seen so many there's, there's so many but in in tibet the authenticity of the story is so huge they're, they're living working breathing temples so in shigatsa you go to this temple it's just unbelievable but as ellen was planning a trip you get down to the southwest corner of tibet 
And it's like, well, how do you get, then get back to Shanghai? You can drive back to Laza and fly, but that's kind of boring. Um, and the agency said, well, why don't you just keep going and then drive across the border into Nepal and fly back from Kathmandu? And we're like, boy, it sounds like a plan. Why not? And, as, and we as you the, do. As you do, right? But <laughs> if, you, if you look at that route, you, you, you're 108 kilometers from Mount Everest. Right. And, and, and so we said, well, as the family thought, well, why not ascend Mount Everest as a why family? Not, why not <laughs> at least go to base camp of Mount Everest? So, so we, we said, let's, let's camp at base camp. And you can, you can book in there, these yurt, these circular tents for about 15 people. And you can, you know, you can you know what arrange. Fascinates, fascinates me about base camp is it's supposed to be like a junk yeah. heap. Is it? It's, Oh yeah, it's scary. I mean, this was quite a few years ago, but there. Let's let's put it this way: there are quite a lot of people staying there, and there are very few public toilets. <laughs> you can imagine what, therefore, where what the scene right? exactly. Um, right. So let's not go there. That's not a nice bit of story. But so we <laughs> camp at Everest Base Camp. It's five thousand one hundred and fifty meters high, and we wake up with the sun rising over Everest. Uh, I mean, the first thing I've sunned Tom, who must have been 12 at the time, he walked out of the tent and he, he threw up because of altitude sickness in the morning. Right. But we watched the sunrise over Everest as a family. There's probably never going to be the chance again in our lives that we do that together. And so take that chance. If there's something like that, go to the concert, go out of your way, make the effort, um, because you never know wh whether you have a chance again or buy that object. What if I'm sitting here looking at two bronze dogs that we bought in uh i think it was i think actually they were nepal it might be myanmar no it was nepal and, and we had an argument to get these on the plane in Kathmandu. and but they're these two beautiful bronze dogs which you know it's like you look around our house everything has a story of a memory together doing something and and that's yeah make the most of it take the chance when it comes up to to go to the concert see the event visit the place buy um, the bronze and also dog to visit friends Spend time with friends. It may seem a bit out of the way, but do it. Sorry? I, I feel like I, by the brass dog. <laughs> yeah. There you I, go. I, so make I the feel most like of it. I, We're only here once. I, I want, man, I, I, I feel like I want to leave it there because it's such a beautiful and lovely sentiment. Um, and yeah, utterly, let's do it. Utterly, utterly, utterly inspiring, man. I mean, you are, you are, it was such a, I, was, I know I said this two seconds ago, but it is, it has been such a joy and utterly inspiring to talk to you. It, unexpectedly amazing. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, but this Thank has been you. glorious, man. So it's, it's great to meet you too. Um, uh, pleasure. And uh, thanks, Sasha, for connecting us. And I hope somebody finds that interesting. Um, <laughs> do contact me if you did. Um, <laughs> but hopefully we'll meet in person at some stage. I would love that, and, man. Uh, I would love that. Yeah, it was a real pleasure to, to chat. Great, great Friday morning for me. And I guess, where are you actually? In New York at the moment? Yeah, in New York. I've got to go home for dinner now with the family. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> but thanks again great. for doing I'm this, man. I'm family. I, 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 uh, we got the weekend I, I, coming up. It's the lunar holiday. My pleasure. That's right. Thank you so much again, man. All right. All right. See All you, right. Simon. Thanks, Take man. Take care. Keep in touch. You thanks too, man. Good to thanks meet you. Again, man. See you. Bye-bye.